Good afternoon, everybody. It is with great pleasure that I join by Team Maryland, who've been all in from the start, to announce that two Prince George's County locations have been selected to be in the final running for the FBI headquarters. <laughs> two sites in both Greenbelt and Landover are now going to be in the running. GSA called us today to tell us that they've sorted through the 12 different sites that they've looked at for where the new consolidated FBI headquarters should be. And they said of the three sites that they've selected, three sites, two are in Maryland, Greenbelt, Landover, and they're looking at a third site in Virginia. This is like winning the primary. Now we're, now we're suiting up to go on to win the general. We've gotten this far because we've all worked together in an open, fair competition. Now we want GSA to do its due diligence on all of the compliance rules, but right now we are celebrating and we are commemorating that Prince George's is one of the top choices. We think that this is about time. For too long, too long, Prince George's County has been redlined, sidelined, overlooked, and undervalued. No more. Today, looking at across the Potomac, you could see that we offer the best site. We want the FBI to have the best site. We're proud Marylanders and we're proud of the FBI. We know that every day, 300, Mar 300 million Americans are kept safe by the FBI, fighting terrorism, violent crime, drug quartet cartels, going after sexual predators who prey on our children. They protect America from cyber hackers and spies and they, that want to take down our economy and take down our country. The FBI is on the job 24-7 in our own country and around the world. That FBI needs a headquarters that is modern and ready for the 21st century. We need a fully consolidated FBI, not a small, dainty FBI. We need a muscular, robust FBI, and we think we have the sites to do it. If you come to look at the old FBI building, you see it's in disrepair, and you see that it's inefficient. Now it's time for a new day. But as the FBI looks to where we can have full consolidation, we say look to Prince George's County. We have two sites where if you come, we offer an intellectual infrastructure through our great academic institutions to be able to train people. We have a great physical infrastructure in terms of roads, transportation, access to subways, and we already have incredible federal assets here from Andrews Air Force Base, Goddard Space Agency, and other assets that are here. We think that in Prince George's County, we have the right stuff to offer and the right sites that to move the FBI, they will have the right headquarters to continue the great job we do. But we couldn't have done it without working together. I'm so proud of my colleague, Senator Cardin, and the important role that he played. I'm gonna introduce him, but before I do, I wanna do a shout out for Governor O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown, who could not join the press conference today, but who've been all in and using all the assets of the executive branch in the state of Maryland from help with land and other things, environmental issues, and been able to help. So we wanna say thank you, Governor O'Malley, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor Brown. But a special thanks to Senator Cardin, who is on the authorization committee that made sure we had the right resolution with the right criteria for the FBI from ensuring proximity to Metro and the Beltway and to ensure that the site would accommodate the full location. So yes, he got it in the federal law book. I'm working to get it in the federal <laughs> checkbook. Uh, and now with that, I give you my colleague who really literally moved heaven and earth in the authorization process, Senator Cardin. Thank you, Chairman Mikulski. 
It is good to have the chair of the Appropriations Committee with such a dynamic leader as, as our Barb Mikulski. And I, I thank you because you have been uh, the leader of our federal team, Team Maryland. And today we've reached this point because, as you point out, the coordinated, strong leadership of our Team Maryland. And I particularly want to thank Rashawn Baker and Mel Franklin and the county leadership for the incredible time and the competitive nature that you've had in, in making sure that Prince George's County was going to present the very best for the FBI. And it started at the county level, and our county leadership was extraordinary. Senator Mikulski, thank you for mentioning uh, Governor O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Brown. Uh, they were key in, in making the commitments necessary so that Prince George's sites could in fact comply with the, with the FBI's need. And I am proud of our federal team. Uh, all of us have worked hard. Uh, Donna Edwards is on the Transportation Committee in the, the House. Critical position in regards to that because they deal with buildings and the building issue. And of course, Denny Hoyer has been one of the great leaders in our state on this issue and on Prince George's County and, and the FBI. So we have Team Maryland who have worked together on this. Let, let me just point out a couple facts. Senator Mikulski mentioned the, uh, the resolution that was passed by the Environment and Public Works Committee. First and foremost, we want the FBI to have the facility they need to carry out their critical importance to this country. They're operating in 20 plus locations today in a terribly inefficient manner. They need a modern, secured facility. That's a campus facility. And quite frankly, the only location that supplies what the FBI needs is located in Prince George's County, Maryland. That's the only location that will satisfy the needs uh, of the FBI for the, the space that they need. Also in that resolution that was passed, we wanted metro convenience. We have that in our Maryland Prince George's County sites. We are absolutely compatible with the resolution. But there are two more points I just want to mention to me that are very important. The value issue to the taxpayers of this country, Prince George's County will have the best value for the, uh, for the taxpayers of this country. And then Senator Mikulski mentioned the issue of fairness. Just take a look at the percentage of federal space in the counties that surround uh, the district, and you'll find that Prince George's County has not been treated fairly in the past. But here, let me say, the Prince George locations are the most convenient for the federal workforce. Most of the workers, the largest percentage, live in the state of Maryland, over 40 percent currently live in the state of Maryland. This is the location that is the most convenient for the FBI, gives the best facility for the FBI, and the best value for the taxpayers. That's why we're excited, and we are united as a team. And I want to just, we, we've had leaders from other parts of Maryland all supporting, all supporting the locations in Prince George's County, Maryland, because they know it's best for the FBI and best for our country. So I am really proud of the work that we've done. We're not finished, obviously. We're going to make sure that we, uh, that we continue to give it the priority and the unity, the unity we need, so that the final decision, when we have, two out of three is not, it's pretty good. We want it to be one out of one. We want it to be in Prince George's, Maryland, and we're going to continue to work to make sure that is what happens. And I would tell you from the beginning, uh, Steny Hoyer has been a, a true champion on this issue. He identified the FBI for Prince George's County years ago when they were just starting to think about the idea that they were going to have to pick a new location. He planted the seeds, and now those seeds are, pairing, uh, are paying off. Uh, I'm proud of the work that he has done on behalf of, uh, of our state and on behalf of our nation, Steny Hoyer. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Ben. <clears throat> well, Johnny Appleseed is, is very pleased to be here. I want you to know that. Uh, and Johnny Appleseed is very happy to have uh, a planter like the chair of the Appropriations Committee on our side. We may be planter? team. Uh, it's a planter. You, you can like get... a little planter? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I mean like a giant oak tree <laughs> that starts out. And when you're with that little acorn for five minutes, you understand that in five minutes it's become a giant oak tree. So I am pleased to be here. I'm pleased to be here with our county executive, Rashawn Baker. 
uh, with the president of our county council, Mel Franklin, who have done such extraordinary work, uh, with my partner, Donna Edwards, who represents Prince George's County. Both of these sites, of course, are in Prince George's County, Maryland, where uh, our two senators have said the FBI ought to be. The Maryland Congressional De De uh, Delegation, Team Maryland, as Barbara refers to it uh, correctly, has worked tirelessly over the past several months to highlight the benefits of locating this new headquarters in Prince George's County. I would call your attention to the map uh, over here, uh, all of these facilities that are proximate to the two sites that have been selected in Prince George's County are extraordinary assets uh, to uh, an FBI uh, mission uh, and an FBI location. Today our efforts have taken another step forward uh, as uh, these two sites have been selected as two of the three sites. Uh, they have uh, much to commend themselves uh, to the FBI as it carries out its mission in keeping America safe from crime and terrorism. Not only are they conveniently located, as been, sit, been said by our two United States Senators, uh, I-95 public transit routes, they're also easily accessible from BWI, National, Dulles, Mark, and Amtrak. Uh, not to mention Andrews Air Force Base, which I'll mention in just a second. Prince George's County and the surrounding area is home to top-notch institutions of higher learning. Senator Mikulski referred to them, but the University of Maryland, College Park, Bowie State, UMBC, UMUC, University College, Prince George's Community College, Anne Arundel Community College, an extraordinary asset for our FBI agents in terms of not only continuing education, but in terms of criminal expertise, uh, particularly at the University of Maryland uh, College, uh, but also at these other institutions. And defense installations like the Joint Base Andrews, an FBI agent can get to any place in the world in minutes uh, from Andrews Air Force Base, uh, hours or whatever, how long it is away. But my point is, in minutes to Andrews Air Force Base, they can be on a plane to get them to where they need to be at a moment of crisis. Uh, Fort Meade, the NSA, and our Cyber Command are all in close proximity to both of these sites. Prince George's County continues to have the fewest, least, federal office facilities of any county in the greater Washington area. Left out was what uh, the senator said, uh, ignored, overlooked. Uh, that should not happen. This jurisdiction is one of the most dynamic jurisdictions uh, in America. Under the leadership of our county executive, uh, County Executive Baker, uh, it is a growing, vibrant, uh, wonderful place to live, to work, and to establish an FBI consolidated headquarters. Yet our county has a talented workforce, 40 percent, as Senator Cardin indicated. I think Senator Mikulski mentioned it as well. Workforce uh, lives in Maryland. So from a traffic standpoint, this makes great sense for the community. Uh, I and my colleagues will continue to work with, my, uh, with the delegation to reach out to stakeholders and provide the GSA and the FBI with the information they need to make the correct decision. Is there any doubt what the correct decision is? <laughs> Without objection, it seems to be. We will make certain the GSA and FBI see all of the advantage of Prince George's County. I'm confident, I really am confident, that their decision will reflect how competitive Prince George's County is, how much more it offers than the alternatives, and how good a deal Prince George's County is. Ben Cardin, Senator Cardin talked about value, and we have value to give. So I am very pleased to join uh, uh, the, my two United States Senators, with whom I've now served uh, for, in Barbara's case, for over 30 years, and Ben's case, uh, for over 45 years, uh, in either in the state legislature uh, or here in the Congress of the United States. And although I have not served with her as long, uh, <laughs> she is saying I wasn't born then when you guys were serving. Smart Alec. <laughs> but in any event, Donna Edwards adds a real uh, dynamic component to the advocacy of a Prince George's County site for the FDI, FBI, and I'm very pleased to uh, yield now to my colleague from Prince George's County, Donna Edwards. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I mean, as you've heard, this is a truly exciting uh, moment for us. And you know, uh, Senator Mikulski refers to us as a team, and we've heard from Senator Cardin. Uh, my colleague, uh, Steny Hoyer. We are a team, uh, and that every team has to have a captain. 
And our captain in this fight has been Senator Mikulski. And so we thank you for that. But we also know that in our county, it really takes leadership. Our county executive, Rasharon Baker, our council chair leading our, our council, Mel Franklin, uh, to make certain that we are all on the same page about the best location for the 21st century headquarters of the consolidated FBI. And we've all known all along that it's Prince George's County. Well, now everyone knows that at least two of those best choices are in Prince George's County. Um, what we know as well is that the public servants who are at the FBI as have been described, they're amazing public servants, so many of them who live in Prince George's County, and they deserve one facility that honors their commitment to our country, provides the best environment to achieve their mission, and makes the smartest use of taxpayer dollars. And here we have two locations in Prince George's County that fill that, uh, fill that bill. We know that the county offers, as Stenny has described, proximity to academic institutions, to our other federal facilities, to Joint Base, uh, to Joint Base Andrews, and a transportation infrastructure that bar none is the best in the metropolitan area, underutilized, but the best in the metropolitan area. And what we also know, and to the good public servants at the GSA, is that we have always known that a fair, transparent, and truly competitive process would demonstrate what has been demonstrated here today, and that is Prince George's County is an obvious choice for the location of the 21st century FBI. I'm going to continue to work with our colleagues here in Team Maryland at our federal, state, and local level. And let me just say something about the governor, about Governor O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Brown. From the very beginning, they said, whatever it is, our state will join with the county, will join with our federal partners to make this happen. And truly, we've gotten this far. Now, we know that this is a longer process. And as the senator has described, this is the primary we've won, but it, we're on to the general election. Well, part of that invo involves an environmental uh, process. And I want to say a word about that process because I, before I came into Congress, I participated in NEPA processes before. It's really important to get that public per participation, to get that buy-in, and for it to be fully transparent. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to elongate this. When the choice is finally made, we want to make certain that all of us have bought in because we've participated. I think the public will get the benefit of that, and the real benefit will redound to the FBI, to the taxpayer, and to those of us who live and work and play in Prince George's County. And then lastly, I have to tell you, as a resident of Prince George's County, I am so proud of what we've done thus far. I am so proud of us being able to stick together in unity. Our entire delegation and our state leadership united behind this effort. And the results are paying off, but we are not done yet. Prince George's County is the right location for the FBI. It's the right choice for taxpayers. We are ready, we are willing, and we are going to make it happen. And with that, I'd like to yield to my favorite county executive, Rashern Baker. All right. Thank you, Thank you Donna. I would like to start by saying, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed as county executive to have great partners. Uh, in addition to the folks that are standing here with us, um, the governor, Governor O'Malley, Lieutenant Governor Brown, uh, County Executive Ken Ullman, uh, County Executive Isaac Leggett, um, were all part of pushing this forward. We really had a united Maryland effort uh, to bring the FBI to Prince George's County. Uh, certainly, you know, we are blessed because we have a dynamic, um, I think you were called the, the uh, captain of the team, uh, the coach of the team, uh, but there, there's no one like uh, Senator Mikulski, and we couldn't have pulled this off with with this far without her help. Can we get another round of applause? Uh, certainly, uh, Senator Cardin and uh, has been right there with us, uh, Congressman Hoyers, uh, uh, Congresswoman Edwards, who has been working right there and pushing all along. You know, so I am, I am, I'm indeed uh, happy. I think, you know, and it's shown today that we have some of the best sites in the Washington region. And I've said this since becoming county executive, that uh, Prince George's County is the place to be. 
and if given the opportunity that we are the economic engine in the Washington region. With these two sites being placed here today, um, it proves that, and, and we know we're going to move forward. I'd like to just, before I call up a great partner of ours, uh, the chair of the council, Mel Franklin, uh, just mention this. We're, so, we're looking so much forward to working with the FBI, uh, continuing our work with the FBI. You know, every morning I get a printout or a text on the crime statistics for Prince George's County. And this morning as I looked over our homicide rates, we're down 41% over last year's homicides rate. Oh, that's great. Right. 41%. A lot of that work has to do with our great partnership with the FBI and the men and women we work with. Wouldn't it be great to have them uh, have a shorter commute to the FBI facility? Uh, and that's what we want to provide, provide for them. But we're very pleased. And I'm pleased to have the partnership on the council. Um, our job is to make sure that we do everything we can to have the infrastructure in place, permitting in place for these sites that they're ready to go on day one. And we've done that working with the state. And so I'd like to introduce the chair of our council, Mel Franklin. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is a big deal. Uh, it is great to be a part of Team Maryland, uh, as the county executive said, as, as everyone has said. There isn't an inch of daylight between us. We are united uh, as one front to uh, bring the FBI to Prince George's County. I want to thank, as, as everyone has, Senator Mikulski for being such an outstanding leader here on the Hill. Uh, we, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, Senator Cardin, your experienced and uh, impeccable leadership. Uh, Congressman Horrier, my congressman, I want to thank you so much for, for your uh, energy and your, your dedication. Congresswoman Edwards, who, who is uh, a, a powerful member for us uh, on the Hill to advocate for Prince George's County every single day, uh, and our county executive. We have an extraordinary partnership with our county executive. I don't believe that we've had such a great partnership between the council and the executive ever. Uh, and I want to uh, say that it's been a pleasure to, to have that partnership and to continue uh, with you and your staff and all of your great work. And in their absence, uh, the governor, lieutenant governor, uh, who have been with us from day one, fighting with us as one team, working with us for, as one team. And, and let's not forget our, our state uh, legislature. We have a great Senate president, Mike Miller, who looks out for Prince George's County every single day. We have great local delegations in the House and Senate. This is one effort. Uh, and we are serious. We, we believe Prince George's County is the best site uh, to allow the FBI to keep us safe and secure from uh, the issues of space, from the access to infrastructure, the access to other assets. There is no better location than in Prince George's County. Uh, we believe it also creates a more balanced economy uh, for the whole region that maximizes the use of our transportation and transit assets uh, so that we don't uh, have uh, a region that's skewed to one end or the, to the other, that we actually have a balanced uh, economy growing uh, for all of us. We, we've seen all the projections about population growth in the region. We have to have a balanced opportunity for residents throughout uh, the region to come and, and live and work. Uh, so we're excited. Uh, as Congresswoman Edwards said, though, this is just the beginning. Uh, now is the time where we're going to have to work hard uh, to make the case that Prince George's County is the best place uh, for the FBI location. And we're ready. Uh, we're fired up and we're ready to go. Thank you, and I'll right. turn it over to questions. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. How, how concerned are you guys about this uh, site in Springfield? Well, I, I'd be glad to answer. Uh, first of all, from a transportation gridlock, uh, grid uh, system, uh, there's not a competition there, I think. When, you talk, when I talked about all the assets that we have, in terms of highways, in terms of railways, in terms of uh, air facilities. Uh, there's just not a comparable site. Uh, and these two sites in Prince George County are relatively close together, so each of the assets re uh, relates to both of them. Uh, and the education assets, the NSA, uh, Fort Meade, uh, Andrews Air Force Base, uh, the proximity, uh, again, we, we don't have a competitor with respect uh, to those in Springfield. In, in respect, I think, to the security aspects and the needs of the FBI uh, for secure facility, I think we are clearly uh, uh, out-competing out uh, the other site that uh, is available. Uh, so for all those reasons, and for the fact that I think from an equitable standpoint, 
from an equitable standpoint, you look at all the surrounding jurisdictions, they have substantially more lease space uh, than uh, office space than does Prince George's County. So from an equity standpoint, this is what, what Senator Mikulski was talking about so eloquently. Uh, clearly, our site uh, gives an opportunity to the federal government to, in effect, share uh, the uh, space that they are leasing uh, throughout the region uh, in an equitable manner. So for all those reasons, I think we are clearly uh, head and shoulders above. And very frankly, we're the only state in which Governor uh, O'Malley uh, and our delegation uh, and uh, the county executive uh, have appropriated money to be working on uh, sites to get uh, uh, facilitate fully a consolidated FBI headquarters. Aren't we lucky <laughs> that we get two bites at the apple? Certainly we put a lot of uh, infrastructure and, and time and efforts into the Greenbelt site and we're glad that it made the short list. Uh, the same thing with the Landover site. We had already started looking at the Landover site when we were relocating our hospital. So it's just now we're sitting down with them again, we, we've done before, and preparing it. We're going to do everything at the county and state level. We've got a commitment from the governor to make these sites as competitive as possible. We think they're great right now, but we're going to do everything on our part to start working on, on both sides right now. So we're excited about having, um, as uh, Congressman uh, Edwards likes to say, you know, a, uh, a, a bunch of riches or uh, embarrassment, of embarrassment of riches. So embarrassment Actually, of riches. I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Well, the first thing will be to, it has to go through a compliance review. Uh, and the compliance review is the environmental impact statement. So if any one of the sites falls off because of environmental issues, that will narrow it down. But ultimately, the decision will be made by three places in government. The FBI will have a lot to say because they know what their needs are, better than anybody. GSA is essentially their real estate broker, but what the FBI needs and the satisfaction of their workforce, proximity to education, transportation, the fact right now in Prince George is so many FBI agents already live there. But the three groups will be the FBI itself, GSA, OMB, and then if there are any regulatory issues related to the environment that will also, of course, play a significant role. The timeline will be within the next 12 to 14 months, uh, and they have to do two things. They have to do the environmental impact statement and do it rigorously so that there's no lawsuit at the end over failure to comply. And number two, it has to pre-qualify developers who want to actually develop the site. What they will do is do this simultaneously. They're not going to do it linearly, like wait for the environment to be done and then the developers. So this is why this, for the FBI's purpose and at the FBI's request, this will be, will be moving in an expeditious way and yet but meet all the compliance regulations. Well, it is really sad about what's happened at St. Elizabeth's Hospital on that territory and, G and the Department of Homeland Security. We on the Appropriations Committee are looking from, to GSA for a real plan on how they want to complete this process. I think uh, 
when the plan was originally designed, it was uh, ambitious. Uh, it's before we faced the debt and deficit that we had. I think going into this FBI process, everyone has a realistic approval. And also, remember, part of paying for this will be to sell the Hoover site or else include the benefits of redevelopment of the Hoover site to pay for this. So essentially, because of the Hoover site, the FBI effort comes with the dowry. Uh, and uh, uh, I think as, an appropriate, as the chair of the appropriations, that goes a long way uh, in meeting the concerns uh, of the uh, budget hawks and the green eye shade folks. Thank you. I think what we will be doing as a delegation to ensure that the process is fair, open, and transparent. We believe that our two sites offer such an enormously competitive advantage. What we will continue to do is to tell the story, but we're not going to be bullies here uh, and uh, try to do that because, one, it's counterproductive. Second, it's not our way. We want the FBI to be in the best possible place. We think we offer two great sites. We believe let the sites speak for themselves, but we want to also give voice to it, as we've done so in the past. And each one here, each one comes with a lever of power, and I know that they'll exercise that lever of power. But we're not going to threaten cut it off money. I think you don't do that to the FBI. We want the FBI out there protecting us, and we'll protect the fact that they'll get a great site, a great FBI, and um, I look forward to supporting them as the senator from Maryland.